What's up guys? So we just finished our Gatsby series and I wanted to take a minute here to kind of just recap over what we did and do a little comparison between Gatsby and Jekyll and let you guys know where I would most likely use these tools. Um, so we ended up going through the tutorial uh, that Gatsby actually provides us. So it kind of gives us an introduction to Gatsby itself, teaches us how to use it, how to work with it a little bit. And I think overall it was pretty simple. It's, it's definitely different than just working with HTML and CSS, but there are some things that are similar. Um, and I, I really like the way that they allow you to template things and you know build your own components or modules and, and use those. It reminds me a lot of Jekyll. So anyways, let's do a little comparison between Gatsby JS and Jekyll. So I've actually got the website up right over here on Gatsby JS and I'll make sure I put this link in the description below, but they give us a really, really good breakdown and comparison of the features between Gatsby, Jekyll, WordPress, and Squarespace. So if we just quickly run through this here, uh, it, some of the things it talks about, I agree with. Um, actually, most of it I, I do agree with. So from my experience using both Gatsby and Jekyll, Jekyll seems to be a bit easier to just get started and do something really quick and use it. If you don't really need to do anything too complex, if you don't need to use a ton of data, or you don't need it to be very feature rich, I think Jekyll does really well. Uh, granted, Gatsby does very well at those too, I just think the barrier to entry with Jekyll is just a bit lower. So for something that's just, you know, a smaller site, a smaller project or something that needs to be up and ready very quickly, I prefer Jekyll just because I'm more familiar with it. It's easy for me. I know what I need to add for HTML. I know what I need to add for CSS to get the SAS going. It, it's super simple, super easy for me to do. Um, now, you might have a different experience if you like the way that uh, we've used Gatsby JS throughout this uh, tutorial series. Um, it might just be easier for you to just go ahead with Gatsby. Now, with that said, I now I do really want to go through the feature list that they have here. Um, and like I said, they give you a very great breakdown and they show you uh, what comes out of the box, what plugins are available, or if there's plugins available, uh, if they are plugins that need customization, or if it's just not even possible at all. So I'm going to start off with performance. And right away, we have, uh, you know, just faster content delivery overall. Static content is really the same between Gatsby and Jekyll. They're both static site generators. But as we move down, uh, there's a CDN and AMP support. Now they both have AMP support, but what I have seen is that the AMP support that comes from Gatsby is just a little bit better. So for that, I would give that one to Gatsby. Now, if we move down, the next section they have here is a progressive web app. And this is where I think Gatsby really excels, especially in comparison to Jekyll. So going through these, we have offline access, prefetched links, uh, page caching, uh, no extraneous code fetching. And all of that comes right out of the box with Gatsby. Whereas with Jekyll, we do get page caching and no extraneous uh, code fetching, but prefetched links uh, uses a little bit of extra work and there are plugins for offline access. It's just a little bit more of a headache and hassle to get going, in my opinion. Uh, so let's move on down here. So we have faster time to interaction. So again, the performance that comes with Gatsby out of the box is where this thing really excels. So I think if you're gonna be working on larger websites or if you're gonna be doing something that's a little more feature rich, you might want to go with Gatsby. And I'll, I'll list off these here as well. So progressive image loading. Now that is something that comes out of the box with Gatsby and it's extremely easy to get going. Uh, responsive image loading, inline critical CSS, and font self hosting. So those all are great and they all come right out of the box with Gatsby. Now with Jekyll, they don't. You have to do extra work on plugins. Uh, responsive image loading is the only one that I see here that has a plugin uh, and you can inline critical CSS, yes. But beyond that, I mean, the only other thing that they have as far as this faster time to interaction in the comparison that Gatsby is giving us is the font self hosting and they're neck and neck on that. Anyways, moving on down. So the developer experience. Um, so they're both serverless. Uh, they both export as code. Um, they both refresh or link to preview. Um, so that, that 
pieces in like debugging um and then uh, two things that gatsby has over uh jekyll which i really wish jekyll had um is hot reloading and hot reload code so you can as you're editing and changing your code you can just see it hot reload in the browser um and if you're just changing your content you can see that change immediately as well um, whereas with jekyll whenever you do a save you have to wait for it to rerun jekyll through it process all those files um, even if you use incremental uh, it's much quicker with incremental in jekyll uh, that flag but it still does take some time it's definitely not instant and the larger your site gets the more of a headache it is um, so if we move on down a little bit, uh, declarative frameworks. So you have componentization, that's how it's written here, uh, one-way data binding, declarative API data queries, um, and a declarative UI. Again, all of that comes out of the box with Gatsby, whereas only one-way data binding comes out of the box with Jekyll, and the other three are just not even possible. Um, let's keep on going. So we have a modern code syntax. So when we're talking about asset pipelines, CSS extensions, advanced JavaScript syntax, again, all straight out of the box with Gatsby. Uh, Jekyll has CSS extensions, um, basically SAS. Uh, and then they also have an asset pipeline and advanced JavaScript syntaxing, but it takes extra work. There's not just a plugin to go ahead and get that implemented. You have to do additional work um, if we scroll on down uh, we have the component ecosystem when we're talking about ecosystems a hosted option and a themed ecosystem uh, sorry a theme ecosystem and uh, the component ecosystem comes out of the box with gatsby whereas the other two they don't but there are plugins for them and then jekyll there is no component ecosystem and then there are also plugins for the other two the next piece we have here is design so I'm not even really going to go over this design too much. It basically just talks about programmatic design, design systems, and component libraries. Gatsby doesn't have any of that out of the box, but there are plugins. Jekyll doesn't have any of it, and it's not really possible with Jekyll. So that's kind of a rundown. I will give you the link to this because they do compare web, uh, sorry, not Webflow, WordPress and Squarespace in this, uh, you know, comparison here. I will let you guys decide on which one you like and which one you think is the right tool for the project. But again, I will reiterate, in my opinion, if it's just a small website, it's just something simple, something that can be needs to be done quickly, I prefer Jekyll. It's just really easy for me to get going there. But if you're going to do anything that's more feature rich, that if you're gonna have a lot of media, a lot of content, I would suggest using Gatsby. I think it just handles everything much better. Um, when you're talking about large websites, that hot reload, hot code reloading is extremely valuable in my opinion. I, lo I love it a lot. That's one of the things that I really wish Jekyll had. So yeah, that's really about it. Um, that I think is a really great breakdown that they gave you. It doesn't really seem one-sided to them. Um, Oh, and another thing that I would like to mention about Gatsby, I have heard that they have amazing, an amazing, amazing community. Um, extremely nice. They will respond and reach out to you if you have any questions or problems and you can't get something done. You're more likely to get help with Gatsby than Jekyll. I'm not saying anything bad about Jekyll, but I just have heard some pretty amazing things with Gatsby. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And I'm thinking about, you know, building a website uh, with Gatsby. So we, again, we went through the tutorial, but I do want to see a bit more of it in action. So I'm kind of thinking about doing maybe like a photography portfolio website where we just, it's not too complex, maybe where we have like a grid layout of images. You click on an image and it goes and shows you like a sub page. Maybe there's an about page, just simple stuff like that. Um, I, I'm really curious to see how well um, these performance uh, bonuses that Gatsby has as well as the uh, stuff that comes with the media and images um, and you know the way it loads the images I'm really curious to see how well it handles that when there's a ton of images on the page so if that's something you guys would like to see let me know because I would be more than happy to go through and you know design a little website and build that in Gatsby so anyways that's gonna be it for today if you guys like this video let me know and give it a thumbs up if it helped you and you haven't already hit that subscribe button and if you like the content that I'm creating on this channel, head on over to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash 
Zach Rear Newton, where you can help support this channel and help me create better videos every week. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.